Genes are genes are the letters. Genes are the letters. And the structure of the genes are assembled, assembled structure. Every letter is all assembled. So if you change the arrangement, the meaning is changed. Like I said last night, G-O-D, you know, if you change the arrangement, it'll be D-O-G. So the meaning changes. God can be dog and dog can be God. It can be changed in many different ways. So if your gene sequence changes, your cells can have different forms. That's what we call disease. So genes are assembled. Because of that, genes can be changed. So it can be restored so that we have hope. Now, genes are the letters. This is a wonderful truth. So 21st century doctors, doctors in 21st century, they see a human being as this. Let's say when I was in medical school, we thought human beings are the lumps of meat. But now we see the human being as the lump of the letters. Letters have meanings. The one who created the letters, why did they create the letters? Because they wanted to see the meaning. Now, Egyptians, now Egyptians made letters with pictures. Genes, we had four letters, like four bases, but we couldn't understand those four letters. Now, doctors these days, they don't understand the letters, so they cannot translate. Now we understand those four letters so that we have to develop our technology with the digital way. If we the sequence is changed, for example, A changed with T, and then C and A, if they change their placement, according to where they change, the meaning and the disease, the name of the disease will be changed. Well, you have all different kinds of disease. Because those bases changed their place. They have, they have the same reason. to be changed. Now, even though the sequence of sequences are changed, there's gonna be the same, uh, it's gonna be the same way to heal 
your diseases. To restore the placement will be will be will use the same way to heal. Now, so human beings are not the lumps of meat. Now, this is the Bible. Now, if we see our human beings as lump of meat, then we see this Bible as a bundle of paper. That's the fact. Yeah, of course, the books, you know, are the paper. Of course, human beings are the lump of meat. But if we say this Bible is just a paper, then we don't know the truth. Then it means we don't want to seek the truth. If I ask you, what is this? And you say, oh, that's just the paper. Then you don't care. You don't care about the stories in the Bible. You don't care about the words in the Bible. If I ask you, what is this? Then if you say, hmm, I want to read, then I'll find out. Then you want to seek the truth. You should seek the truth. You know, baby turtles went to the sea. Oh, baby turtles went to the sea. Just that? Please try to find the truth in the story. Those mysterious world. Because the mysterious world exists, we are alive. You know, there are many measurements which can measure our brain. Before, when I was in school, we could only measure our brain waves. But these days, they have all different kinds of way to examine our brain cells. And they find many amazing things as they examine. Now, you know, we have conscience. If someone pinches you, you have pain. If someone calls your names, you know, you're upset. You have conscience. If you have no conscience, you don't feel bad. You don't feel pain. Why? You know, a long time ago, we thought our brain controls our conscience. Of course, it does. But actually, later... We found out that even though you have general anesthesia, you have no conscience. You know, if you have general anesthesia, if you, you know, cut them or if you call their names, they have no ideas. But he's still alive. Even though we have no conscience, we can be still alive. We can be still alive without conscious. So some people lie in their bed all their lives without conscious, but he can still alive. He can be still alive. So, you know, scientists and doctors, they give general anesthesia to a person, but the person now is in comatose. But the brain cells still working. We thought if we have no conscience, we thought our brain cells don't work. But then, even though we have no conscience, the brain cells kept working. Do you know how much percent of brain cells work without conscious? 95%. So 
So only 5% of brain cells are working while we have conscious. So 95% of brain cells are working under our conscious, means subconscious. When we are in subconscious, 95% of brain cells are functioning. It means even though we cannot control, there are many mysterious things are happening that's beyond our control. For example, T cells find the cancer cells and then they produce lymphatic toxins and they kill the cancer cells. But then we don't know those things are happening. Even though those things are happening in our body, we don't know. It means even though we have conscience, we cannot control those things. So we are alive. How can we alive? How can we be alive? Because there is going to be a higher spiritual conscience exists. With our conscience, we cannot control. Right? Even though we have conscience, we cannot do that. But then higher spiritual beings are controlling us. You know, those things that we cannot do are happening in our body. Sometimes we say, empty yourself. You know, monks, those Buddhist monks, you know, they pray to empty themselves. You know, some of them are really good, even though it's difficult. If they keep doing it, even though they have conscious, they feel like they are unconscious. Then their body functions really well. What does this mean? Our 5% of conscience actually bothers 95% of our unconsciousness. So when we empty ourselves, it means when we don't control those 5% of our conscience, our body will function really well. Now then, we can induce very important result. Now we, uh, we interfere many of the things that 90%, 95% of unconsciousness You know, what kind of things do we interfere with our 5% of conscious? The spark is controlling with 95% of our subconscious. Of course, the spark means the truth, the goodness, and the beauty. Now then, 5% of our conscience 
What is that? If we accept the opposite side of the truth, goodness, and the and the beauty, then we bother those systems. We interfere those systems. Now, when we say we are going to have a meditation, it means we are going to empty ourselves. Means five percent of our conscience. We want to empty those five percent of our conscience. Maybe it's a okay way. You know, the spark is very working very hard in our ninety-five percent of unconscious. Yes, we can help when we empty ourselves. We can help the spark. Now, you know, if we help, if we help the spark instead of empty ourselves, that'll be much better. If we support that 95% of unconscious, subconscious, the action of 95 of 95 percent of subconscious, then that's a lot better. Now, mom in English is mind, mind. mind and when you empty your mind we can say mind mindless mindless that kind of medication we have it so me when people say they meditate it means they want to have mindless state but our new start practice we seek mind mindfulness we want to have a mindfulness with what are you going to fulfill yes we're going to fulfill our mind with the truth the goodness and the beauty that's why we should learn the truth Yes, that's true. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, we are so thankful. When you fulfill your heart with these kind of things, you are supporting, you are helping that 95% of our subconscious. You're helping the spark which are working in our 95% of subconscious. When you say you want to have a mindlessness, it means you're very passive. But if you want to have mindfulness, it means you're very active. You want to fulfill your mind with the beauty, the goodness, and the truth. You're encouraging, you're supporting your subconscious. You know, all around the world these days, they chose the passive way, which they want, which means they want to have a mindlessness. But new start practice, this is more active. We want to have a mindfulness. So we shout sometimes, we sing. We want to fulfill ourselves with the truth and the goodness and the beauty. Now, what is the worst method? What is the most harmful method? You go against, you fulfill your mind with uh, 
You know, something like hatred, jealousy, evil thoughts. Then you have great, you will have great loss. Well, you're, you're here because you had great loss in your life. I'm not talking about the moral law. You know, all the time we say, you know, God punishes you because you had very evil heart. We call this kind of things religion. I don't like religion. I like the truth. When you fulfill your heart with the goodness and the truth and the beauty, you can be happy. You cannot help being happy. Please don't use your religious ideas. Ah, oh, he's a good kid. I'll bless him. It's not like that. This is the principle of life. When Creator creates us, He recorded this program in our genes. If you're good, I'll bless you. If you're bad, I'll punish you. This is not like moral or uh, artificial. You know, it's not like that. Our system is not made like this way. But then, But then we change this truth into the fact. And that's why religion has, the meaning of the religion has been changed. You know, religions can be all different according to how you change the truth. Now, I don't want to teach you the religion. I want to teach you the truth, which is unchangeable, unchangeable truth. You know, if I practice my medical degree, then I would be very rich by now. You know, I don't have to give you lecture, you know, lectures like three times a day and eat with you three times a day, you know, things like that. But, you know, I really love doing this job. You know, a long time ago, I thought, mm, because I love Hawaii. I love swimming in the sea. I loved Hawaii. And everybody was very surprised. You know, I love swimming. So I really enjoy swimming in Hawaii. But many people worried about the sharks and many people worried about their cramps. But you know, you don't have to worry about those kind of things because if you practice stretching, if you stretch every morning, you don't have to worry about cramps. Because when you stretch yourselves, those capillaries in your body are all spread it out and now you have very wonderful diet. You have a balanced diet. So you don't have to worry about those cramps. When you have cramps, it means you know, calcium and magnesium, when those things are unbalanced, then you have cramps. You know, I used to have those cramps. I used to have those cramps a long time ago. But then after New Start, practicing New Start, I didn't, I never had cramps. Now you see you have diabetes and hypertension, that you take medicine, then your, your, your liver, you know, has unbalanced, you know, lifestyle, and then you usually have cramps. You know, sharks, they don't eat anybody. 
They have to smell the meat. You know, when the shark comes toward me, he can only smell apples and vegetables. You know, they don't like those kind of things. So they are not so interested in me. You know, the ha Hawaii is so beautiful. You know, Hawaii, of course, is a tropical area. You know, sometimes the rain comes. Now, while you're swimming, you know, you meet skulls sometimes in the middle of the sea. It is so beautiful. Now, the sea level and my eyes are the same level. And I could see those raindrops right in front of my eyes. As the raindrops hit the, the sea, I could see the beauty of those raindrops. So while I was swimming, I fulfilled my mind with the beauty. Then I felt so wonderful. And I could release my stress, mindful. You know, I fulfilled my mind with the spark, the beauty, and the goodness. But then people are exactly the opposite side. Uh, maybe he's lying to me. Mm, things are not going to work. You know, those kind of disappointment and depression. You know, they live in that kind of world. So they interfere the spark who is working in 95% of our subconscious. That's why we need to learn the truth. We have to read good books. Ah, oh, this is so true. You have to deeply understand the truth and teach those things to other people. And you should give them testimonies of yourself that how happily you live right now. And then you know your genes will be very activate. So you shouldn't fulfill your hearts with the evil things, especially women. They fulfill their hearts with so many complicated things. You know, men are very simple. So when women talk with guys, they said, oh, they feel like they're talking to the fool. You know, myself, me, I am a simple man. I don't try to involve those complicated things. You know, we don't run money business here, so I'm very simple. And men want to be into one thing, and men want to be very professional, so they become very simple. But then women, they're very complicated. You know, they have in-laws' families and their own her own families, and, you know, many different things are happening. And she has to think about all of those things all the time. And the children's education and private lessons, you know, so forth. But the men don't really know these kind of things. So... That's why women's thinking are very complicated. But then men cannot live if they have these kind of complicated things. Now, women are very familiar with these complicated things. So when men become just a little be complicated, then he can't live. You know, when a man asks, uh, honey, where where is the 
Where is the food that we ate yesterday? And then the woman says, oh, that's uh, where, 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 so-and-so in the refrigerator. Now, when the woman answers, she could just picture those refrigerator inside of the, pi the refrigerator. But men, they don't have that. You know, women has many pictures in their mind, in their brain. Now, men can't do that. Why? Because... Men are trained to be simple, trained to be professional. Now, for example, long time ago, men, you know, when a man goes for hunting, you know, he should, you know, hunt. You know, he shouldn't care about where his socks are, where his foods are. Men should concentrate to hunt the animals. He shouldn't hear, he shouldn't think of other things. He should only concentrate on hunting so that he could bring the bacon. But then the women, you know, she has to take care of the babies and then laundry, you know, and she has to worry about the weather. So many things at the same time. But the man cannot do many things in one time. You know, when a man and a woman get married, they fight over these kind of things. Because men, if a man reads the newspaper, they say, ah, oh, this is what's happening. Ah, oh, this is what's happening. Ah, oh, if this thing works this way, oh, what is going to happen and blah, 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 so and so. So man is concentrating on that. But on the contrary, women... A woman misunderstands a man because she's not like that. You know, man is reading the newspaper, you know, she's concentrating on reading the newspaper. But a woman, he's, she's asking her husband, honey, is it raining outside? You know, this question, she didn't have to ask this question, but then she asked this question. And the man, you know, he can be a little upset. Like, Don't you have eyes? You can see with your own eyes. Why do you ask me? You know, this guy is upset a little. You know, men, for example, when six men get together, they only talk about one thing. They discuss over one topic. You know, this is, that, oh, your thinking is different. And, you know, they just talk. But when six women gather, you know, they start talking one by, I mean, two, two, two. They make three groups, okay? And three groups are chatting. But then the, this group woman goes to other group and talk about their things too. So they chat many different things. So men and women are totally different. If you don't understand these things, then, you know, it's very easy easy for you to fight. <laughs> you know, women can sense every single thing. So, if a man wants to lie, ah, oh, he's a fool. Man cannot lie to her. She knows everything. You know, she pretends to be fooled, but then the woman is not going to be fooled. So I give up. So I give up to fool my wife. You know, she's really fast. She catches really fast. You know, men are more professional. You know, but then men cannot catch up with women. So, uh, you know, I give up. You know, this kind of things happened to me. You know, I was reading a book. Oh, this is how it works. And our genes are like this. Oh, you know, I was reading and reading. Oh, I couldn't understand this sentence. So, you know, I was reading and reading. You know, my wife asked me, 
Is it raining, honey? Then, you know, I become upset. Don't you have eyes? Then, woman, oh, she's very hurt. Because between women, it never happens. You know, I see those things with my eyes, but you should see with your eyes also. You know, raining is not that important. But then, you know, they make these kind of things important. You know, oh, what if it rains? We should bring the umbrella and da-da-da-da. It means women want conversation. They don't worry about the issue, but they want to talk. They want to share their feelings. They want to share love. But men are not familiar with these kind of things. And if a man is like very feminine or a woman like, you know, maybe he can bring the bacon to whole house. You know, men were upset, so, you know, he answered that way. But then the woman thinks differently. She thinks, oh, the man is not interested in me. Oh, he doesn't love me anymore. And then the man says, what are you talking about? I still love you. Are you out of your mind? This is this has nothing to do with this issue. You know, I was reading the newspaper. That's all. You, in, you interfered me, and that's why I answer this way. But then in women's case... They say, oh, if you love me, you should answer. You know, they have many misunderstandings. It doesn't mean they hated each other, but they fight because they're different. You should understand this mechanism. I thought you guys are all single, but you're all married, huh? I wanted to teach you before you get married. But, wow, you don't look like you're married. Anyways. So, you know, when you see your husband concentrating, don't bother them. You know, I love concentrating. I want to tell you something more valuable, so I have to think a lot. So, you know, my wife can be lonely from time to time. You know, I think about many different things, you know, but my wife, she tries to be good to me, so she asks me, you know, or she... She said, oh, honey, do you want some tea and things like that? But then I said, oh, wait, 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 honey. Then, you know, she is hurt. You know, I have to train. I have to practice. I have to concede the nature of men. But I have to tell my wife, honey, I love you. You are the first. You know, things like that. But... You know, my hometown, you know my hometown. It's like a manly, manly hometown. So it's very difficult for me to express my feelings. Especially when you, when you have a cancer, you're in the room alone. And then you're fulfilling your mind with so bad things that you cannot conquer your cancer. So you have to train and practice to receive the spark. Which brings you the life. You have to feel the life. You 
Your genes should realize the life. You, your genes should listen to the voice of life. Then your genes will work actively in a positive way. But many people listen to the voice of death all the time. You know, in our world, in our society, we say voice of life and voice of death are the same. But in our New Star practice, we practice to listen to the voice of life instead of voice of death. We don't want to hear the voice of death. So the most important thing in our New Star practice, you shouldn't listen to the voice of death because your genes will be turned off. You should hear, you should listen to the voice of death. life. You should fulfill your mind with the life, the spark, so that you could support and help the spark which is working in your 95% of subconscious. Do you understand? Now you're sick. Now, you know, we have, everybody has 24 hours a day. Now, you have to decide, you have to make a decision to fulfill your mind with the goodness and the truth and the beauty. You have to You should try very hard to listen to the voice of life. And you should also provide your body uh, the, with the proper environment. Then, you know, something great, something amazing things will happen to you. A little while ago, I was watching TV. I was watching TV. It was talking about the cable car. Now, this 78 years old man is living in that island where he was born. The altitude is quite high. He lives in Wulung Island in Korea. And there he lives with a granny who is 77 years old. So this TV program showed those two old people's story. Now this grandfather, this man, is very healthy. Even though he's 78 years old, he could do everything. He could climb down for 30 minutes and 40 minutes and, you know, climb up 30 or 40 minutes. His house is up in the mountain. So he, you know, climbs down and up, up and down every day. But then this granny, this woman, 77 years old granny, is sick. She has rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis. So this grandfather, he made a cable car. 125 meters of cable car. So if this grandmother wants to come down, climb down, she, you know, rides on that cable car. And I was watching, hmm, how come The lady is sick. And I was thinking, mm, maybe she listened to the voice of death. 
you know, she wanted to live in town. She didn't want to live up there. But then this guy, this man, this grandfather didn't want to leave. Didn't want to leave where he was born. He, so he lived up there of the hill. So, you know, this granny, grandmother pushed herself to live up there. So she listened to the voice of death many times. But then this guy, this is my heaven, and he enjoyed living up there, up on the hill. And every day he was hanging, singing and humming. You know, at first when I watched the program, I thought this man, this grandfather is little mentally, you know, ill, things like that. You know, he talks as he sings. He was composing music. He was composing lyrics. You know, so seems like he's, you know, little mentally ill. So as I watched TV, I was thinking, hmm, that man must be out of his mind. Or he must have something in his mind. And that's why he lives like that way. I wanted to watch what's next. Now, you know, one day, this grandfather, old grandfather, started to talk. He said, you know what? I can have a very wonderful life. When I'm happy, life can be fruitful. Life can be worthwhile even though the problem comes. We should turn those fruitless life into fruitful life. So I was thinking, hmm, so this man is not actually out of his mind, but he's practicing his philosophy into his life. You know, when you practice New Start, actually, you should look like that old granny as well. You shouldn't worry about being silly. You know, Myself, if you look at me, what do you, f what do you think? You know, I am silly. <laughs> you know, but my wife, she is not silly. She doesn't look silly. You know, but me, sometimes I look silly. I say everything is okay. Everything is okay. Then you know, I'm silly. This is okay. That is okay. Oh, this is hopeful. That is hopeful. You know, I'm being silly. If I'm not silly, then I should say, oh, this is serious. You should be careful. You know, things like that. But everybody says, like, this is very serious. But then myself, I said, it's okay, no problem. You can be cured. You know. But you know what? It is not easy to see those negative things with positive mind. You know, however, this grandfather looks so young, even though he's 78 years old. You know, we have to defeat this voice of death with the voice of life. You know, voice of life, it's not easy to listen. But you know what? You don't have to try to listen to the voice of death because it's everywhere. It's everywhere. The voice of death is everywhere. Why? Why is that? If we can hear the voice of life without try, it is going to be so wonderful. 
But you know, like this grandfather, he was singing, right? Now he's trying. He's trying. Okay, today I'm going to sing. You know, when you practice your new start, you should practice like this way. Today, again, I'm going to do this. Let's say now you're married and now you become a mother. You know, the mother's influence is great. You know, children are with mother, you know. Of course, from prenatal education. You know, long time ago, we didn't really care about prenatal care. But because we know now the nature of the genes, when a mother listens to the voice of life, the genes, baby's genes are also turned off. But the mother is listening to the voice of death, then the baby's genes are turned off. So Korea or America, all around the country, those developed countries, they have low birth rate. But by the way, you know, children all around the world, especially in developed countries, they have many autism children. You know, when you were young, you know, when I was young, I've never seen autism child. You know, my time, you know, when I was young, we don't, you know, <laughs> we didn't really care about <laughs> studying. <laughs> we just say, you know, we didn't care about, you know, the worldly care. But these days, so many autism children, there are so many autism children. In America, in case of America, they have so many autism children in elementary school. You know, they need to be treated differently, especially. But you know, because there are so many autism children, Because there are so many autism children, they look sometimes very normal. You know, mothers are very busy because they have to go to work. So even though their children have autism, but then they send their kids to normal school. And teachers, they don't really know. But who can find this autism child? Yes, parents can find this, but then they're busy finding this. So in America, the government sends this specified um, test paper to school to find who autism children are. You know, their character, the nature, the character of these autism children, they don't want to have relationship. They don't want to have relationship with other people. because they don't even have a good relationship with mother. Then they don't, they don't have eye contact. They avoid. So they're always alone. They're always alone. They play alone. You know, they play with toys alone. So sometimes they look normal, but they are yeah, autism. They have autism. You know, they don't care how their mother cares about them. They just to eat. When a mother asks, is it good? They don't answer. They just eat. They just eat. They, they act like machine. They act like a robot. You know, we feel like we are normal, but then we're all autism patients. In what ways? 
you know, our creator, our God says, Ooh, I love you. I love you, children. But then we don't even look at him. We don't have eye contact with God. You know, the spark, God is working in our 95% of our subconscious, but that we don't care. We are alive because of the spark who is working in our 95% of our subconscious. You know, try to have eye contact with your creator, the spark. This is new start practice. Now, when I realize who God is, and as I study the genes, and as I study New Start, that was so great. And I regret it. Why didn't I have eye contact with God? Now, we are all suffering from spiritual autism. Now, you know what? I turned, I changed myself to be a to be the son of God, to become the son of God, the child of God. Now, when you are alone in your room, especially women, patient, and especially when you're alone in the room, you listen to the voice of death very easily. Now, women have a lot of imagination. Women can imagine a lot of things, but those are the deadly imagination. Not a healthy imagination. Now, she had lunch, for example, and she couldn't digest. And she said, oh, you know what? My cancer maybe is spreading out. Oh, then what is going to happen? And she imagines and she imagines. She calls 911 and she goes to the emergency room. And, oh, you know what? Maybe I might die there. She's imagining. Men, they don't really imagine these kind of things. Now, you know, women even, even imagine her funeral, even. Over death, she even imagines her funeral service. How can you imagine your funeral service? But some, some women do. Now, she was in a casket in her funeral service, and there was a little hole in a casket so she could look outside. Now, she saw her husband, and there was a woman beside him. And who, who, who is that woman? Who is that woman? You know, right at the time, your imagination, okay, w w while you're imagining... And your husband came, honey, this is, you know, flowers for you. And then you ask him a question. You're going to get married when I die. And then your husband, oh, what, what happened? You know, so man suffers. Man did nothing wrong, but the man suffers because of woman's wrong imagination. So... Someone said, men, don't try to understand woman. Love her unconditionally. <laughs> so if a man says, what happened? Then woman, you know, she's shy to explain why she said that. Then man can say, hmm, maybe I got the wrong woman. Hmm. You know, men, any man in the world, you know, sometimes regret. Because he couldn't understand his wife. So when men get together, you know, when they drink alcohol, they, you know, you know, a, a man talks about his problems. And the other guy said, you know, it's not your case only. You know, my wife, my, my wife does the same thing. Oh, your wife as well? And then, you know, 
So if you want to get married, guys, you know, you should understand women. I'm sure because you already know because you live with your sister. You know, you don't understand your sister, right? Sometimes it's very difficult to understand your sister, right? Now, everybody, when you hear the voice of death, don't listen to it. Even though you have proper environment, but if you're full of, if you listen to the voice of death, then, you know, the spark cannot come in. And that's why the tape is very important. You know, this lecture is very important. You should read your note from time to time because you forget. You know, after you listen to this lecture and you leave this store, 95% of those things you have learned in the class will be forgotten. You know, when you listened or when you listen in the class, you say, yes, yes, that's right, I will do that. But then when you leave, as you leave, those decisions will go away. Now you listen to this lecture three times a day and when you have, you know, when you have wonderful diet and exercise, then you're full of this beauty and then the exercise and the truth. But that when you go back home, now that's the real fight that you're going to have. And then when you go back home, you will have a serious battle with the voice of death. You know, we are very familiar with this voice of death. It is very easy for us to think negatively. You know, we don't have to try even. It comes naturally. Let's say, how come this voice of death is very easy to listen? We don't have to even try to listen to the voice of death because it comes naturally. But how come it is difficult? Or how come we have to try to listen to the voice of life? Why is that? You have to find the truth here. You know, voice of life, where does it come? It's from God. That's the spark. Voice of life is the spark. That comes from the word of God. So God gives us life, the spark, so he gives the voice of life. But then why do we have to try to listen to it? Voice of death comes from the evil power. You know, e we don't have to try hard to listen to it because it comes naturally, easily. So, you know, the monks, Buddhist monks, they memorize those Buddhist spells. Why? Because they want to fulfill their mind with those words. That's why they repeat, they recite the words of Buddhism. You know, as you, if you read those Buddhism or Buddha's teaching, it has amazing truth. You know, they recite those words of Buddha to fulfill their mind with life. If we translate this into Christianity, it means It is, it has to be a prayer life. Now, my question again, why do we have to try to listen to the voice of life? But how come I don't have to even try to listen to the voice of death? 
The voice of life comes from God. But then God never forced us to listen to it. We have to choose to listen to the voice of life. So New Star practice, here we have to choose to listen to the voice of life. If we don't choose, those voice of life cannot be heard. Now the opposite side of voice of life, you know, the evil spirit, they pushes, they forces us to listen to it. You know, it is very easy to hate or dislike someone who says bad things, who speaks ill of me. Spontaneously, you dislike that person. When you hear that person spoke ill of you. But the life of voice, I mean the voice of life, for example, if you hear someone spoke ill of you, you say, oh, I have to forgive him. I have to forgive him. I have to forgive her. Then you pray, God, please give me the spark to forgive that person. Then you're free from the voice of death. So if you know the spark, the spark will free you from the voice of death. That's the truth. The voice of life will set you free. This is amazing truth. And this is the principle of life. And that's why we call this Bible a book of life. So that you have peace in you. You make your mind peaceful with the truth, the goodness, and the beauty. You should have peace in you. Do you understand? You know, you're, we are not trained to overcome this voice of death with voice of life. So this is not easy. And that's why you have to try very hard. It is very difficult to do the right things in the world. About food, you know, it's very easy to have spicy, salty, sweet, greasy food. But it's very difficult to have a good diet. Why? Because this world is controlled by the voice of death. And most of people are enjoying this world. You get sick because you live in that world. Therefore, if you want to be free from this deadly world, even though it is a little bit difficult, you have to be sure to accept this voice of life and you have to gladly do this. Then your genes will be changed amazingly. You know, I had 11 sickness myself, but then they're all gone now. Not only that, but my body condition, I feel much better than before and ever. And, you know, even though, you know, I'm a doctor, but I can't believe it. You know, I was very weak. And I thought, man, I'm going to die when I am 33. Why did I say 33? Because my dad passed away when he was 33. You know, but then I'm not that I'm not as healthy as my dad was. My dad had pneumonia. He died in 1950 during Korean War. He suffered for four years.
from pneumonia. We didn't have medication back then. There are so many people who died with pneumonia. And because I was weak, I didn't feel good. I had diarrhea. I had a headache. So I was thinking, hmm, I could live only up to 33. I had that fear in me. That is the voice of death. I couldn't be free from that thinking. You know, I decided to think differently. If I want to live more than 33, I have to do something important, something great, more than three, 33 times. That's what I decided. So, for example, push-up, whatever I do, I always did more than 33 times. So I was relieved when I did push-up 34 times. If I do like if I did 31 or 32, then I felt like I was going to die when I was 33. You know, so when my birthday, 33 and 34th times 34th birthday passed, I felt like yes, now I can live. You know, I had that obsession in me. This world is very strange. You know, your obsession is the voice of death. I'm sure you all have this obsession. I also have this obsession. You know, after I finished my high school SAT, you know, back in old time, uh, there are many movie posters all around the wall on the street. You know, I had this obsession that if I look at this movie posters on the wall, I would fail the exam. I had this very unreasonable, very strange obsession. So before... I got reported that I passed the exam. I never looked around. I just looked forward straight. What a that is that was so unnatural. Now I can tell you about this, but I know some of you have some problems that you don't want to talk about. But now you know, I am free from those kind of things. Oh, my. I am free. When you look at me, don't you feel like I look free? I can talk about whatever I want to. I can keep talking because there's nothing stopping in my subconscious. Whatever the spark gives me, I can just talk naturally. I can just talk to you naturally. I can laugh naturally. This is so amazing. You know, even back in old time, laughing was even very difficult for me. If you look at my passport picture, Back in old time, I was very rigid, like this. I was very proud of myself. Who can be better than me? You know, that was my attitude. But now, I am very relaxing. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's okay. You know, anybody can be better than me. You know, I don't mind. You know, I feel freedom. Everybody wants to be free. <laughs> Some people say they want to be free. And they say something freely. And they still say they want to be free. Sometimes very strange. 
Now you have to have this freedom as you practice this new star practice. But you know, how come this is difficult for everybody to have obtained this freedom? Why? Because you are embarrassed. You know, embarrassing, embarrassing moment stresses you. If you are free from stress, it means you are free from your embarrassment. You know, sometimes I am being silly. So, you know, you know, stretch is very important. Okay, please don't forget. Okay, if it's not important, we don't do this. If you look at, you know, just stretching, oh, that's important, but then this is very, very important. You know, this is important. So even the dogs, even the cats, they do stretch. It's their instinct. Why? Because stretching is important. God programmed them to stretch. But Koreans, they suppress this instinct. When we wake up in the morning or when we sit in, a long, in, a, in one place for a long time, then you know we stretch. We stretch naturally. Okay. You know, when a young person stretches out and then the elderly people, seniors, they say, oh, oh, what are you doing in front of the senior? You know, this is like a Korean culture. So even though you want to do it, but then, you know, you stop it. But you know, stretching is very important. Even the birds are doing, even the little birds are stretching. They practice stretch. You know, when they wake up in the morning, they stretch their body. Like wings, you know. You know they are so cute. And then their tails, the wings, and then legs. Very cute stretch. Every day they do it and then they start acting. It's very important. Stretching is very important. By the way, in Korean society, this stretching hasn't been really spread it out. So if you stretch on the street, people look at you as a very stranger. But for me, myself, I have to stretch myself out. You know, as you know, I take airplane many times. So, and then after you get off the airplane, you have to wait for your luggage. And then I, of course, practice stretching. Do this and yes, this way. I practice stretching. Yeah, of course, these days Koreans are orientated, health Korean orientated these days. Now, if you sense those people around you looking at you a little, you know, strange, then it's very difficult for you to stretch. Now, when you practice new start, even though you're embarrassed, you do it. If you have this mind, I'm going to do it even though I'm embarrassed, then you will succeed. You know, even though you stretch, you know, you are not bothering anybody else. You're not bothering anybody else. You know, last time I arrived in America and I was waiting for my luggage. I was at um, Atlanta airport and I was practicing stretching. And a man came closer to me and looking at me. Oh, I didn't care because like I was on the airplane for a long time. And after I was done, this guy came up to me and spoke to me. Sang Lee, you practice what you teach us. Now this man 
watched TV. Watched TV while I was lecturing on TV. You know, some people say, oh, what a silly man. You know, they gossip. You know, those people are very, those people can be very embarrassed. You know, sometimes those people are embarrassed because of other people. Other people are doing something, but they are embarrassed. Even though they are not doing it, they are embarrassed. You know, my wife was at the bank, and I was outside of the bank, and I was stretching. You know, maybe seven, eight years old little girls, they, pa they were passing by, but then they stopped and looked at me. You know, I'm a positive thinker, okay? So, you know, when I look at that kind of, you know, scene, I think positively. So I was thinking, hmm, these girls want to learn because I am stretching out. So, and that's why, you know, they're watching me. So after I'm done, I'm going to explain how wonderful this stretch, stretching exercise is. You know, I was thinking, really. So I was, you know, practicing and stretching out. And I was about to explain the benefits of stretch. And I said, how old are you? What grade are you in? But then she didn't answer. She said, Granny, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Aren't you embarrassed? You know, they watched me because I looked silly. And then they said again, Don't you need to do these kind of things in your physical education class? How come you're not embarrassed? Now, their thinkings are all rigid. They couldn't think freely. Now, in the airplane as well, you know, sometimes I stretch, you know, at the back of the airplane or the lab near the laboratory. And then people, you know, they look at me. You know, you shouldn't lose there. You should overcome. You know, I do this at the back of the airplane, and people look at me. You know, you shouldn't be so shy. You should say, hello, hi, how are you? And then those two people got shy. They're embarrassed. You know what I found? Those who embarrasses you, those who embarrass you will be embarrassed. If you say one thing, because they're so embarrassed, they wouldn't look at you again. Be brave as you practice new start. Be brave. Just greet them. Just say hello to them. They wouldn't embarrass you. So if you're embarrassed, just say one word, and those people will be embarrassed. You need to have this wonderful experience. You need to overcome this experience. Overcome this embarrassment. Then you will be free from this embarrassment. You know, especially Koreans, they really worry about what other people think. You know, Koreans, they really worry about what other people think. Americans, well, they have their own opinion. And they accept it. So they don't really worry about what other people think. They're not that shy. Of course, they are sometimes embarrassed, but they don't really use that word a lot. Now, when you're in the room alone, when you hear the voice of death, then do not listen to it. Stand up and overcome that voice of death. 
Now, the best way to overcome, pray. Pray to God so that you have, that you want to have the voice of life. But if you still cannot have the answer, then practice. You sing this song. Cast all your cares to the loving Jesus. You sing. If you start singing, those voice of death will go away. And then you will realize, hmm, I can be free from this voice of death. Ah, this is the spiritual freedom. If you can experience this, you're, you will have wonderful rest. Maybe sometimes you can hurt your pride, but to overcome this voice of death, you have to express your try into your behavior. When you do it alone, when you do it alone even, sometimes you're embarrassed. Even though nobody's looking at you, you are still embarrassed. You are embarrassed just because you're singing, even though you're alone. You know, it's very strange, but in us, we have two egos. There's true ego and the false ego. The true ego wants you to be free from the voice of death, but the other ego, which is false ego, doesn't want you to be free from the voice of death. You have two egos in you. The voice, the person of death and the person of life. You have to choose your ego of life. Now please choose your ego of life so that you can overcome that ego of death and you can be also free from your disease. <laughs> 